Welcome to Lost in Revision. All of our content is public domain fairy tales and folklore. We are here to celebrate the original literature instead of just reading the modern sanitized versions. We post short segments of stories daily for people who just want a story to follow along with and monthly full episodes where we read and discuss popular classics. Come and find us on Patreon to listen to the full chapters early and without interruption. Any support you can offer helps keep this podcast going and you entertained. All of our music is by Nathan Hubble and is used with his permission. Thanks and enjoy the show. Chapter 9. The Pride of Perks. Part 1. It was breakfast time. Mother's face was very bright as she poured the milk and ladled out the porridge. I've sold another story, chickies, she said. The one about the king of the mussels. So there'll be buns for tea. You can go and get them as soon as they're baked. About eleven, isn't it? Peter, Phyllis, and Bobby exchanged glances with each other. Six glances in all. Then Bobby said, Would you mind if we didn't have the buns for tea tonight, but on the fifteenth? That's next Thursday. I don't mind when you have them, dear, said Mother. But why? Because it's Perks's birthday, said Bobby. He's thirty-two, and he says he doesn't keep his birthday any more because he's got other things to keep, not rabbits or secrets, but the kids and the missus. You mean his wife and children, said Mother. Yes, said Phyllis. It's the same thing, isn't it? And we thought we'd make a nice birthday for him. He's been so awfully jolly decent to us, you know, Mother, said Peter, and we agreed that next Bunday we'd ask you if we could. But suppose there hadn't been a Bunday before the 15th, said Mother. Oh, then we meant to ask you to let us ant anticipate it and go without when the bun day came. Anticipate, said Mother. I see. Certainly. It would be nice to put his name on the buns with pink sugar, wouldn't it? Perks, said Peter, is not a pretty name. His other name's Albert, said Phyllis. I asked him once. We might put A.P., said Mother. I'll show you how when the day comes. This was all very well as far as it went, but even fourteen halfpenny buns with A.P. on them in pink sugar do not of themselves make a very grand celebration. There are always flowers, of course, said Bobby later when a real earnest council was being held on the subject in the hayloft where the broken chaff-cutting machine was and the row of holes to drop hay through into the hay racks over the mangers of the stables below. He's got lots of flowers of his own, said Peter, but it's always nice to have them given to you said Bobby. However many you've got of your own, we can use flowers for trimmings to the birthday, but there must be something to trim besides buns. Let's all be quiet and think, said Phyllis. No one's to speak until it's thought of something. So they were all quiet and so very still that a brown rat thought that there was no one in the loft and came out very boldly. When Bobby sneezed, the rat was quite shocked and hurried away, for he saw that a hayloft where such things could happen was no place for a respectable middle-aged rat that liked a quiet life. Hooray! cried Peter suddenly. I've got it! He jumped up and kicked at the loose hay. What? said the others eagerly. Why, Perks is so nice to everybody. There must be lots of people in the village who'd like to help him make a birthday. Let's go round and ask everybody. Mother said we weren't to ask people for things, said Bobby doubtfully. For ourselves, she meant silly, not for other people. I'll ask the old gentleman, too. You see if I don't, said Peter. Let's ask Mother first, said Bobby. Oh, what's the use of bothering Mother about every little thing, said Peter, especially when she's busy. Come on, let's go down to the village now and begin. So they went. The old lady at the post office said she didn't see why Perks should have a birthday any more than anyone else. No, said Bobby, I should like everyone to have one, only we know when his is. Mine's tomorrow, said the old lady. A much notice anyone will take of it. Go along with you. So they went, and some people were kind and some were crusty and some would give and some would not. It is rather difficult work asking for things, even for other people, as you have no doubt found if you have ever tried it. When the children got home and counted up what they had been given and what they had been promised, they felt that for the first day it was not so bad. Peter wrote down the list of the things in the little pocket book where he kept the numbers of his engines. These were the lists. Given. A tobacco pipe from the sweet shop, half a pound of tea from the grocer's, a woolen scarf slightly faded from the draper's, which was the other side of the grocer's. A stuffed squirrel from the doctor. Promised. A piece of meat from the butcher. Six fresh eggs from the woman who lived in the old turnpike cottage. 
a piece of honeycomb and six bootlaces from the cobbler, and an iron shovel from the blacksmith's. Very early next morning, Bobby got up and woke Phyllis. This had been agreed on between them. They had not told Peter because they thought he would think it silly. But they told him afterwards when it turned out all right. They cut a big bunch of roses and put it in a basket with the needlebook that Phyllis had made for Bobby on her birthday and a very pretty blue necktie of Phyllis's. Then they wrote on a paper, For Mrs. Ransom, with our best love, because it is her birthday. And they put the paper in the basket and they took it to the post office and went in and put it on the counter and ran away before the old woman at the post office had time to get into her shop. Thank you for joining us today. I would like to thank all of our supporters on Patreon. Your support helps pay for all of the things that podcasting requires and helps keep this show alive and growing. Feel free to fact check us and offer suggestions to make our show better for you. You can send us an email at lostinrevisionpodcast at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow and give us a good review anywhere you listen and share with your friends and family. There's a lot more waiting for us all at the end of the road.